a judge who needs convincing, based on Judges chapter 6 and 7. In the years of plenty that followed Deborah's victory over the Canaanites, the Israelites again forget God. One by one, they join their neighbors in worshiping the idol Baal. At last, only a few people in all of Israel remember that God had rescued them from their enemies. Every harvest season, just when the Israelites are ready to gather their food for the year, roving bands of Midianites steal their harvest. For years, the desert tribesmen terrorize the Israelite villages and raid their fields. Run for your lives! If they find where I hid my grain, we'll starve! But when the raid is over, it's gone. Our grain is gone. For seven long years, the Israelites suffer at the hands of the desert tribesmen. They hide out in caves and thresh their grain in secret places, but the raiders always return. Then, even more frightening news comes. The Midianites are coming again, and they're bringing great armies from the east. Like grasshoppers, the enemy swarms over the Israelite fields, stealing grain, cattle, and sheep. One day, a young Israelite is secretly threshing his grain when a stranger appears before him. Who are you? What do you want? You are a mighty warrior, Gideon. God has chosen you to save his people. Me? My family is the weakest of the whole tribe, and I'm the weakest one in my family. If you're really an angel of the Lord, then give me a sign. Gideon prepares some food and brings it to the stranger. Put the food on the rock. The stranger touches the food with his staff. Instantly, a fire bursts forth and consumes it. I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. When the angel disappears, God speaks to Gideon and tells him to destroy the altar of Baal. But Gideon is afraid of the townspeople, so he waits until dark to obey. Won't the people kill us if they find out? That's why we're doing this at night. But Gideon still hopes that God hasn't really called him. He asks for a sign. Okay, God, tomorrow morning if this wool is wet with dew and the ground is dry, then I'll know that you have truly chosen me. The next morning, Gideon has his sign. The ground is dry, but there's enough dew on this wool to fill a whole bowl. But Gideon is still afraid. Oh God, please don't be angry, but give me just one more sign. This time, make the wool dry and the ground wet. Then I'll really trust in you. The next morning, the wool is dry and the ground is wet. All right, God, I believe. Now I know that I am the one called to save my people. Gideon calls the leaders of Israel together. With God's help, we can drive the Midianites from our land. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. With an army of 32,000 soldiers, Gideon marches to the hills surrounding the Midianite camp. What a camp! Their camels outnumber the sand on the shore. Don't worry. With 32,000 men, we have a good chance against them. But God gives Gideon more instructions. God has said that if any of you is afraid to fight, you may leave now and go home. Most of his army disbands. About 10,000 men remain. But God wants it to be clear that victory comes from God, not the strength of Gideon's army. He makes Gideon weed out his army once again. When the men stop to drink from a brook, anyone who kneels down to drink is sent home. How can I win a battle with so few soldiers? Only 300 men are left out of Gideon's original army of 32,000. Now the Israelites know beyond all doubt that only with God's help can they defeat the enemy. Hide your torches in these pitchers. Spread out on three sides of the camp. Wait until nightfall. 
Then listen for my signal on the trumpet. We're ready. At Gideon's signal, the men blow their trumpets, smash their pitchers, wave their torches, and give the battle cry. A sword for the Lord and for Gideon! Though they are only 300, the Israelites' torches, horns, and shouting throw the Midianites into a panic. They lash out with their swords, striking each other down. Within minutes, they've killed more of their own men than Gideon ever could with his original army. The Lord has demonstrated his might once again. 